congrats on the International Emmy. Thank you. I, uh, thank you. Yeah. It is, uh, it is on sale if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? Uh, it was surreal, you know, to, uh, what, two things. Number one, it was yeah. just kind of nice to have that many people listen to an Indian story from across the world. So that was very nice. Yep. It was an honor. And then the first thought was, how the hell do I get this through JFK? Because uh, <laughs> it is very sharp and you can, you can murder someone yeah. with an international yeah, enemy, yeah. which doesn't happen at the after party. It's just... Uh, <laughs> And I'm, I'm typically used to being, like, very nervous at JFK anyway. Sure, yeah. Uh, so I just... And when you have that <laughs> statue with, like, the... La it, it's like I've metaphorically kidnapped a white lady. So... <laughs> so th the guy was just like, what's in the bag? Yeah. And I was like, it's an international Emmy. <laughs> and, and the guy at TSA was like, oh, word. <laughs> and, and I was like, okay, precipitation. <laughs> Because that's a word. Uh, I'm kidding. That didn't happen before the New Yorker fact checks me. Uh, yeah. It's a daily show. Nobody's going to fact check uh, yeah, that's you. That's fine. You're, all, you're all yeah, good. Yeah. So, look, th this win was special, I, I assume, because uh, based on your stand-up special, you thought uh, at a point that your career was, was over. You were yeah. called a terrorist. There were criminal charges that were filed against you for the, the 2021 poem, Two Indias. Um, that, that was like a, a, a gripping, reflective account of, of political and, and uh, social complexity in India. And I have to be honest, when I saw both of those, both the poem and the, and mm -hmm. the special, my... Only reaction was, this is a brother who loves his country yeah. and just wants to make it better through conversation and through art, but not everybody had that reaction. So t talk me through sort of that process and what happened. Well, I mean, th the central theme of the special, I think, is that, that love is never yelled, mm. love is felt. And uh, that includes love for your country, where it's never sort of a loud proclamation, it's kind of a, a quiet demonstration, and, and I don't think there's a better demonstration of love than laughter. And, and I think that, that you know, um, you know, if you love someone, you want to make them laugh. And yeah. if they love you, they laugh back. And that goes for your country, too. But I, I was at the center of this controversy. And I'm a small fish, so I'm not accustomed to that kind of limelight. And, and I think uh, in America, for instance, if you're a big fish and you're in a controversy, there are options, right? So you can go on Oprah. Um, <laughs> but... Then you lose your bodyguards. Uh, <laughs> you could blame it on antibiotics, uh -huh. <laughs> which doesn't work in India because we know a lot about antibiotics anyway. Sure. We're like, amoxicillin doesn't cause courage. Um, or you could, uh, if you know Jada Pinkett Smith's publicist, I guess she, <laughs> she is the internet right now. I think uh, she's both a wife and Wi-Fi. And uh, <laughs> I didn't have any of those options, so you kind of fall in love with your job all over again. I was like, okay, I, I will never lionize myself. I will never victimize myself or take feedback head down. And the first thing I do will, write a, will be I'll write a joke about it that hopefully makes both sides laugh. And four months later, this is what I wrote. I wrote down saying, I was on the BBC homepage and there was a big headline that said, comedian polarizes the nation. Do you know how badly you have to f up before the British say... <laughs> I said, do you know how badly you have to f*** up before the British say that you divided India? Uh, but what happens then, the point I'm making yeah. is a bad day in your life turns into laughter. And I think happiness blooms when it's watched. And so you get to watch people be happy because of that. And then that turns into a gold statue someday. And you're kind of you're reminded that Comedy, this job on its best day can sometimes be alchemy. Mm. And it's kind of nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very well said. Um, the, the little British thing reminded me, you know, my, my grandparents were uh, secular freedom fighters. Yeah. Uh, and so those were the stories that we heard growing up a, a, as kids, and that, that obviously influenced me later in life. Um, Recently, uh, Prime Minister Modi was hosted by, uh, by President Biden. And, mm -hmm. and during that visit, uh, a lot of artists in the South Asian uh, American space were having conversations about our counterparts in India and free speech, free speech and comedy, artistic expression. Um, and I'm curious how you've managed to kind of navigate that space. Well, look, I mean, on one day, our Prime Minister had dinner with Biden. And the next day, Trevor Noah had dinner with Dua Lipa. And <laughs> I wasn't invited to either of those events. So um, I do think if you get to travel the world as much as I do, uh, you start to think of freedom of speech, which is the big conversation around the world, yeah. um, less 
locally and more emotionally. Huh. And I think right now, it's, you know, whether you're in the Middle East or whether you're in uh, India or whether you're in the West, the conversation is freedom of speech. And I think it's, yes, curtailed by authorities at different levels in different places, but more curtailed by the people around you. Huh. You know, we live in this world where you see somebody as just a box and you could you try and control their speech as well for their ideas. And so sometimes we blame it on these larger things above us, but really we're submitting to something scary inside us. And if we can fight that primal urge to lash out at each other, I think then the world just gets better, freedom of speech-wise. Like, here's how I think freedom of speech works. Um, it's like you and me are on a train together, right? And somewhere in the corner is a guy who has his dick out, right? <laughs> Which guy? Uh, just... <laughs> It's, it's New York, so 50% of the compartment, yeah, but uh, you and I can't do anything about the guy with his dick out. I, <laughs> I'm just talking to see if you see it too. Yeah. And I think that's what freedom of speech is. I just need to know that you also <laughs> see the dick. I, I just, I have to give you so much props for this, because this <laughs> could have gone in two different directions. <laughs> This could have ended up with, like, the New York Times, Bombay Times, yeah. Times of I mean, all of them just writing about some serious political conversation, yeah. and instead, it's like Cal Penn and Virdas are on a train with a dude whose dick is out. They... And that's... That's... Yeah. The, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're really just <laughs> elevating the humor in it. So, uh, I have to give you flowers, though. Can I take a second to give you flowers, if that's okay? Yes. Uh, okay, so the reason that <laughs> many brown men like myself come to America to try and act is because we saw you be the first Indian brown man be edgy and cool oh. and funny in American <laughs> cinema. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So... Thank you. So... I would like to thank you for ruining so many lives. <laughs> because I came to college in America because I saw Van Wilder. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> I went to college in Galesburg, Illinois. Uh -huh. And I'm like, where the f is this college where people sleep with the Indian guys? Cal Penn <laughs> is a liar. Uh, and just by the way, I think you know this, statistically, this is the sexiest accent in the world. All right, I'm just saying. Uh, right? At this given moment, more women are having sex with this accent than any other accent in the world. <laughs> All right? So, in your face, France. And also... <laughs> you then do Harold and Kumar. Yeah. Where you, you go and get cheeseburgers, and at the night... At the end of the night, you make up with your parents. Do you know what would happen if I told my parents I spent the whole night looking for beef? <laughs> Harold would go to White Castle. Uh -huh. Kumar would have an arranged marriage the next week. <laughs> so, but flowers. Well, thanks, brother. Thank you. And I, I, I have to say, the, you know, there, there were many very talented actors who came before me who didn't have the same opportunities and, I did, yeah. who also went to drama school, who also worked their butts off. And so I appreciate those, those accolades, and I, I, I share it with them. Thank you know. You, but before we let you go, I also I I, uh, I want to know about your tour. It's a 33 country tour. It is. Yes. Um, a, I want to know where you're going in the new tour. But then, but then B, like, are there bits that don't translate in some countries that people just don't find funny? Do you have to curate it for each audience? No, I, I think now it's kind of because of Netflix's and Amazon's and YouTube's, it's become more important to kind of be authentically Indian. Yeah. Dave Chappelle gets to take you to Ohio. I don't know a damn thing about Ohio, but I go. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, on that journey with him, why can't I take you to Mumbai? Why can't I take you to Delhi? And if you've yeah. never been, come over, and at the end of the night, whether you're Indian or not, you'll be Indian. You know, so <laughs> come to my show. I, um... I'm, I'm gonna be playing Carnegie Hall. I awesome. think I'll be the first Indian comic to do it. All right, on. Yeah. Congrats. Um, and we're doing the Kennedy Center and the Chicago Theater and a bunch of theaters in, in January. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's large, you know. Congrats! I can't can't wait to can't yeah. wait to check out the tour. Uh, you're uh, you're developing a, a comedy with uh, my buddy Andy Samberg. Uh, yes. Can you tell us about it? I can. Uh, okay. Uh, I I wanted to be in a TV show that was a modern immigration story. Yeah. But I wanted it because immigrants we always come over and do sensible stuff in America, <laughs> right? Uh, the, the, and why take a 29 hour flight if you're going to do something sensible right. uh, when you land? <laughs> So I wanted to make the show where Americans and Indians sit on a sofa and watch together, but Indians get to come over and be outrageous and ludicrous and enjoy America. So my show is called Country Eastern, and it's about me 
as a brown bearded Indian man who becomes a country music singer in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes. Yes. I'm a huge country music fan, so go. that makes me that makes me very excited. Um, on your shows, you always end asking people in your audience, uh, "What's the one thing you want to say to the world?" Yeah. Why do you do that? I just think it's so interesting. I have, I think, one of the smartest crowds in comedy, and I say that to get their money. I, <laughs> I, I just do it. I think a lot of comedy these days becomes about look at me and, and look at my jokes and look at my my pathos and my ethos, but. You know, the audience is an equally loud voice as you do, and, and I think there's no better teacher than their laughter and their silence. So sometimes I just like to put the camera on them and say, look at who I have the privilege of performing for. And some of it is great, and some of it is, uh, you know, what it is. But, <laughs> but I think it's valuable to share your platform with your audience sometimes. That's the only reason I do it. Do you, uh, do you still tour with uh, Juhu Beach Sand? I, okay, so the, in the special, I have some Indian soil. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm a brown man with a beard, so traveling with a bag full of <laughs> dust uh, internationally yeah. doesn't work out well for me anally, but I... Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I try to. Look, yeah. my, my shows are, are like this big reunion. You know, if you're not from India, you get integrated into India. If you're Indian, you sometimes haven't been in a room full of Indians in a really long time. Do you know how many people hook up at my shows? <laughs> like... This is the best f***ing <laughs> ad ever right? that you're having. By the way, yeah. Just, Listen, yeah. <laughs> I'm like Seema auntie with a jawline, all right? That's, <laughs> that, that's who I am, <laughs> right? Like, I, I have couples that are formed at my shows. So it's this big India celebration. It's kind of cool. Man, that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Veer will be performing his Mindful World Tour to Carnegie Hall on January 19th with more stops in the U.S. in January and February. Veer thoughts, everyone.